Ahoy hoy, and welcome to, let's call it Reading Thursdays. I don't know if it's going to be a common thing I do, but let's uh, take a look at an SCP I wrote this month even. I think it was about ten days ago and posted to the wiki. It had a bit of controversy early on because I did my traditional thing where I left an object class out, and apparently a bunch of people took issue with it this time around. And I say this time around because I've done it more than once before. Either way... People took issue with it this time around, and <laughs> decided to a few quite a few people decided to down in speak out loud and say they downvoted specifically because it had no object class. So, uh, me being the upvote hound that I am, I went ahead and added one. I don't really care that much. It's my opinion that it doesn't need it, but eh, people think eh, eh. if it matters to somebody, it matters to somebody. Regardless. I wrote this recently. It's up on the wiki. It's at plus 48 as of this reading. So let's get started. By the way, this is SCP-5113, The Life and Times of Chairman Meow and the Wooftang Clan. Intrigued? Item number SCP-5113. Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-5113-1 is to be kept in a mid-sized sentient entity containment cell in Section E of Floor 27 at Site 88. SCP-5113-1 is to be allotted a minimum of two hours of supervised outdoor exercise per day. The SCP-5113 project lead has the authority to deviate from the scheduling in case of unexpected events. Any such deviations must be reported to the Ethics Committee. Furthermore, the SCP-5113 project lead has the authority to requisition any entertainment necessary to ensure SCP-5113-1's mental stability is maintained. A GPS tracking chip has been installed into SCP-5113-1 due to several escape attempts. SCP-5113-1's future escape attempts are to be tracked and catalogued. Description: SCP-5113-1 is an orange domestic house cat. Felis Catus, capable of vocal communications. SCP-5113-1 possesses a personality and intelligence similar to that of an adult human. SCP-5113-1 claims to possess an ability to communicate with other members of the Felis Catus species. However, testing has shown that SCP-5113-1 is no more capable of this than a baseline human. SCP-5113-1's vocalizations originate spontaneously from a location directly above its larynx. SCP-5113-1 is additionally capable of utilizing its larynx to generate sounds which one would normally expect from an animal of its size and species. SCP-5113-1 possesses several other non-standard anatomical traits, though they do not affect its health or normal function. These traits include situs inversus totalis, or a mirroring of its internal organs from their normal positions, and a lack of spleen, stomach, or gallbladder. MRI and X-ray scans show an absence of material in the location where one would expect a brain, though the surrounding tissue are still physically supported as though it were present. SCP-5113-2 was a domestic dog, Canis lupus familiaris, of the Great Dane breed that was in Foundation custody from March 8, 2012 to January 25, 2020. Outside of its species and size, SCP-5113-2's anomalous nature and anatomical abnormalities were identical to that of SCP-5113-1. For more information, see previous iterations of this document. SCP-5113-1 and Dash 2 were obtained via purchase from Marshall, Carter, and Dark on March 8, 2012. The two objects were already familiar with each other at the time of their purchase. After consulting with contacts in Wilson's Wildlife Solutions, it was determined, as both individuals were juveniles at the time, that they would be raised and socialized together to help ensure mental stability for both entities. The following is a short list and summary of SCP-5113-1's escape attempts. Incidents 1 through 5. SCP-5113 attempted to attack its handler during exercise time and climb the chain link fence surrounding the exercise yard. None of these attempts were successful in escaping the enclosure, however. SCP-5113 was embedded with a GPS tracking chip following the second escape attempt. Incident 6. SCP-5113-1 escaped the control of its handler. It then dug a hole under the fence enclosure and escaped the exercise yard. SCP-5113 was then trapped in the secondary enclosure surrounding the first and was recovered with minimal injury to Foundation staff. 
Incident 7 through 9, SCP-5113-1 was able to escape inside Site-88. While it was unable to leave the facility, it was able to avoid recontainment for 4, 7, and then 23 days respectively. Due to the site's EM shielding, SCP-5113's tracking chip was not of assistance during recovery. Incident 10 through 12. SCP-5113-1 escaped the facility through unknown means. The entity was tracked down within three days through GPS tracking during each incident. Incident 13. SCP-5113-1 escaped the facility through unknown means and physically removed the tracking chip under its skin. SCP-5113-2 was able to provide useful information on SCP-5113-1's location, however, and the entity was recaptured. SCP-5113-1 was reintroduced to its shared containment cell with SCP-5113-2 following Incident 5113-1-13. The following is a log of that interaction. SCP-5113-1 You fucking traitorous motherfucking dog! SCP-5113-1 briefly attempts to attack SCP-5113-2 at this point. SCP-5113-2 moves around the room during this interaction to avoid SCP-5113-1. I, I don't know what happened. What happened? I heard someone coming and I thought it was you. But no, it was these assholes again. Maybe they heard you talking about it in the yard, Em. Don't do that. I know you. You told them. I'm sorry. No, you're not, Woofy. You do anything to help the humans. No, Em. You sold your only friend out for a pat on the head. And you left. I did what? You left. You left me alone. The entities pause their conversation for approximately nine seconds. Both relax their body language considerably. The whole point of the meetup spot was for you to meet me there, dummy. How, Em? I'm too big to get out of here. You are not. You just gotta wait for your moments all. No. I was gonna be alone. SCP-5113-2 climbs down from the counter and lays down next to the chamber's television. Woofy, you are... You're so fucking dumb sometimes. If you didn't make it out, I'd have come back for you. No, you wouldn't have. Yes, I... No, I know you. You would have thought about it, and then something else would have distracted you, and you'd never get around to it. And then I'm stuck here forever. SCP-5113-1 joins SCP-5113-2 next to the television. Move over, you big dumb dog. Are you still mad at me? Yeah, I am. But American Ninja Warrior is on, and we're going to watch humans pretend to be cats now. Okay. The two entities then fall asleep over the next hour. No further escape attempts have been attempted since this incident. It is unknown if this is due to the change in behavior on SCP-5113-1's part, or a further refinement of escape planning. Regardless, increased surveillance is recommended. In January 2020, it had become evident that SCP-5113-2 was reaching the end of its natural lifespan. It was decided that it would be allowed to expire naturally, and its cohabitation with SCP-5113-1 was to be maintained during this process. The following is the last recorded conversation between the two entities. Hey, Em? Um, yeah? Em, yeah, I, I think it's time. Okay, you... You need anything? Turn on the TV? SCP-5113-1 utilizes the activation switch for the provided television. What's on? <laughs> People pretending to be cats. It's good. It's good. You like that one. You think there's a show about cats pretending to be humans? Probably. Cats can do anything. Yeah. You, you think I'll go to the people place when I die? I don't think so. But I don't think they go anywhere either. Oh. Sorry, I, I mean, I think what matters is what we're doing right now, you know? Like watching TV? Sure. For me, it was being the best cat I could be. It could be something like that for you if you want. 
There's a pause for several minutes at this point. Was I the best dog I could be, Em? Hell no. You were a terrible dog, but you were like my best friend, Wolf. That's nice. The two are silent for an additional 47 minutes before SCP-5113-2 speaks again. I thought there'd be more, Em. These were the last words spoken by SCP-5113-2. The body was later removed and autopsied. The cranial void was no longer present, though other anatomical irregularities remained. In the place of the cranial void was a non-anomalous canine brain. Further testing is underway. SCP-5113 Related Communications We at Wilson Wildlife Solutions were saddened by the news of Woofer's loss. Any loss of life comes with great sadness, and especially when you have friends who miss you. Recently, however, we recovered something that might interest you. A Harlequin Great Dane puppy that was born on the same day that Woofer passed. It possessed all the anatomical irregularities present in other 5113 animals, it cannot speak, but it cries similarly to a human newborn. We believe it needs to be socialized with similar animals and believe it would be appropriate to leave it in Foundation care. Expect him the day after tomorrow at the latest. Best regards, Theowen Wilson. And that's 5113. If you want to leave your rating up or down, there's a link in the description of this video that you can click and go to to decide how you want to rate it on the wiki, assuming that you have an account there. If you don't, you should probably make one. But uh, regardless, thank you very much for watching. As you can see, I've already started... Oh, well, I'm still having trouble pointing to the right direction. I'm starting to try and increase the uh, complexity. I don't have a plain white wall over here anymore. There is a poster. I have a You're Wrong About This Poster poster that's going to be here. Yeah. That's, I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff that's in the background here and just put a You're Wrong About This Poster poster somewhere back here. Uh, I think that's actually really all I need to do because I'm here. This poster's here. That poster will be there. I think that'll be it. That looks good to me, right? Either way, thank you very much for watching. I'll probably switch this one here out. I just bought it on a whim at Walmart. It's a uh, Nightmare Before Christmas poster, which it says, What a Wonderful Nightmare, which I thought, eh. I liked it. It looks very stylistic. There's some other stuff I could probably buy, which, I, as I said, I'll probably switch some of these posters out from time to time. But for now, this is what we've got. If you want to support this content, there's multiple ways to do it. First of all, and most importantly, and absolutely free to everyone, scroll down and hit the subscribe button. Then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified immediately when I upload new content. Then if you look while you're down there, you'll see a carousel of merchandise, like the poster that I'm going to have eventually on that wall over there. I actually rushed the shipping, so you should see it in the next video. There will be um, t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, posters, mugs if you'd like, all sorts of merchandise. You can click through, look through the store, and buy something that you like. That helps support me. And if you'd just like to support the channel in general, head on over to patreon.com forward slash dcimmerian and pledge like everybody here on the screen already has. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here. I'll see you all again on Tuesday.